Okay, so now we have our recorded data, and I want to review the results here. First of all, on our beam, this is the strain gauge that we were using. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. If you didn't see the first video prior to this on the bonding, this is the gauge that we're using. The wires come off the side. This is one of MicroMeasurement's UB patterns uh, available in the CEA series. It's ideal for this kind of testing. So again, we have uh, have them on both sides of the specimen. Let's let's look at the results here now. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit, and you can see the results on channel one and channel two in columns B and C here. And in column D, I'm showing the difference. Now, you can also see this graphically on the chart, that once we got above about 500 microstrain on both gauges, there was a constant difference of around 56, 57 microstrain, all the way up to in the 600, 700 microstrain range. Now, this would be a, about a 5 to 7 percent error if we did not do the average to get the true axial strain. You can, you can see that... Uh, this is uh, gauge one. Let me go to the chart here. I'm sorry, uh, the red is channel two, the blue is channel one, the green is the average. So how does this work? Let me show you graphically why we did what we did with the average here. Okay, what we have is a combined stress state of bending and axial strain. So this uh, rectangle here represents axial strain combined with uh, bending strain. Here we have the neutral axis. We show that on one side of the specimen it's a rectangular cross section. Uh, so the neutral axis is right in the middle. We have tension and compression. It could be on either side, but this is just uh, depicted like this to show you what's happening here. So when we combine the two together, we have on one side of the specimen our channel one strain, on the other side of the specimen our channel two strain, and this is what the combination of bending and axial would be. So you can see that one side is going to be at a higher strain level than the other, and this could be reversed. In fact, I think in our data channel two is actually the larger, so it could, it could happen either way. So how do we separate the bending strain from the combined bending and axial measurement? What we want to get is get rid of the bending so we can measure just the true axial strain. Well, simply, you take the average of the two strains measured on opposite sides of the specimen. By taking the average, uh, you can see that uh, the average strain graphically is going to be the same as the axial strain. So here, if I were doing an analysis on this, along with load, I would be using column E, the average strain. This is my true axial strain. Now one other important, important point I will show you here regarding any strain measurement. A lot of times uh, customers will call us and they'll say, well, how do I know if my strain gauge worked throughout the test? And it's actually obvious here, this is why I'll point it out. You can see that at the start of the test, both strain gauges uh, were initially zeroed and then we loaded it to several hundred microstrain and then I unloaded it and you know aside from a little bit of weight of the fixture they both went back to zero. This is an indication that the strain gauges uh, gave me good data all the way through the test. Now what I would look for if I were to question this is if one or both of the gauges did not return to zero and maybe indicated you know greater than 20 or more microstrain I would really question if the gauge was installed correctly and would probably want to reinstall a gauge and run this test again. Thank you for the time and I hope this is helpful.